Hi and welcome to Yoga with Kylie and this nice short simple practice for a little bit of wrist and hand therapy. So as you can see we're using common household items. It was kind of inspired by actually cooking one night and having a little bit of difficulty holding the pan with my right hand. And the interesting thing about <clears throat> the hands and grip strength is it's a really good sign of our neurological function. So they often use grip strength as a means to determine whether athletes are ready to train really hard that day or whether they need to back off and do something more restorative. So in this practice, we're going to be mobilizing the wrist, strengthening the muscles of the forearm, the palm, and just moving the hand and the wrist through all of its ranges of motion. I'm going to be sitting in Varasana. If that's not comfortable for you, you can actually do this sitting on a chair and resting your arm over the edge of a table. <clears throat> so just know that that is also an option for you. So we're going to start with the block or your hand uh, resting either on the block or on the edge of the table and you want the palm off the end. You're going to put your other hand on top of the forearm and this is to stop the forearm from rolling in as you do this. So we want to try and isolate to just what's happening within the wrist and then squeeze your fingertips together. Point your fingertips all the way down towards the ground and then take them across towards the pinky side of the hand. Reach all the way up towards the sky and then over to the thumb side of the hand and then just repeat that. <clears throat> so it's a nice simple circle but the tricky thing about this is that the forearm will want to get involved and the fingers will also want to curl towards your face as you bring the hand up so you're really trying to avoid any of those actions and then go the other way so go to the pinky side first all the way down across to the thumb side and out towards the sky a couple more times like that Really trying to stop that forearm from rolling in as well. Good, and then release, switch to the other side. It's the same thing, you're going to try and stop the forearm from moving. Go towards the pinky side first, all the way down. Go across to the thumb side, and then all the way up to the sky. And again, <clears throat> and as you're doing it, really trying to isolate the movement to the wrist. Noticing when the forearm's wanting to get involved or even the shoulder sometimes likes to get involved. Good, and then re uh, reverse the circle. Nice, and then once you're back to the center, you can release that Let's give the wrist a little shake out. This next one is gonna be a little bit of grip strength. So you can either use a squishy ball or you could use some rolled up socks. So whatever you've got handy, you could even do it without by just squeezing into a fist. I'm gonna use the squishy ball just for a bit of resistance. So you're gonna squeeze onto the ball as tightly as you can, all the socks, and then release out of that. Squeeze as tightly as you can and release. And we'll just do this for about 10 repetitions. So you're trying to get as tight as you can with that squeeze each time. Good, about five more. And then also notice if you're starting to use your shoulder or other parts of the body, maybe the jaw even, to get that really tight squeeze. Good, and then switch over to the other side, give that hand a little shake out, squeeze tight and release. Squeeze tight and release. <clears throat> so you can kind of modulate how much uh, resistance you have by the sort of ball that you're using or how many socks you roll up. Really start to notice if you do bring in other parts of the body like the shoulder. Good, last three, two, one. And then we're going to do the opposite action. So for this, I'm just going to use some hair ties. You could use rubber bands. Just anything that has a little bit of elasticity to it and has a bit of a circle. Um, I've looped three together just to give a little bit more resistance. Um, really up to you depending on what your finger strength is like. So for this, you're going to start with the fingers together and then you're going to push and try and expand out as much as you can. Hold it for three, two, one one and then back in with resistance push and expand open hold three two one and slowly back in and again as you do this notice if the shoulder wants to get involved 
And oftentimes we start to compensate using the shoulder for actions that really should be coming from further down in the wrist, the forearm. Good, and a few more. <clears throat> you might start to feel this perhaps in the forearm. two and one nice and then switch over to the other side so same thing start with the fingers together loop it around and then open expand the fingers as much as you can hold and then release back in open and hold and again just check in notice if the shoulder wants to get involved I noticed that my elbow was starting to kind of do some weird funky things can you isolate it to just what's happening in the hand? Good, last three. And two. And one. Nice, release that. Give your hands a little shake out. So we'll do a little cat-cow motion now, combining wrist extension which is this action with wrist flexion with the fingers staying down so this part of the hand stays down the entire time so starting in your tabletop position you're going to sit your hips back towards your heels lift your sitting bones lift your chest pull your fingertips all the way up so you've got your wrist extension keep pulling them back as much as you can and then come forward, start to round your spine, lift the heels of the hands up and try not to shrug the shoulders into this, uh, up towards the ears. So you're really trying to hug them into the sockets. Lower the heels of the hands down, lift your sitting bones, lift your chest, lift your fingertips, pull them back as much as you can. And then come forward, round your spine, lift the heels of the hands up, take the thumbs away from the floor as well. Nice slow squish of the heels of the hands down. Try not to bend the elbows. Sit your hips back, lift your sitting bones, lift your fingers. And then come all the way forward, round the spine, lift the heels of the hands up, push through the fingers. Sit all the way back, lift the fingertips, pull them back as much as you can. Notice if the shoulders have shrugged up. Come forward, round, and then lift up. We're going to stay here now. Keep the thumbs away from the floor. Lower the heels of the hands down, but very lightly touch the ground. And then lift them back up again. And then do that again. Now, as you repeat this, just notice if the shoulders are starting to pull up around the ears. Or if you're starting to be in the elbows. Now, if it's really challenging, just shift the weight back a little. And if you need a little bit more of a challenge, you bring the weight a little further forward over the fingertips. <clears throat> Good. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Lower down. Take the weight off your hands and give your hands a little shake out. And then grab your block, or if you're sitting at the table, come back to the table. You're going to put the block on a slightly higher level. You can actually do this without the block. The block just stops you from using other parts of the body. Now, for this, you can either grab something like a pot, or a can of beans, or a weight. So just depending on the strength through your um, forearm, the action that we're going to be doing is lifting the thumb up and then taking the pinky finger down. So we're staying in this plane of motion, trying not to roll the hand or the forearm. So again, you're going to use your other hand just to isolate and to stop the forearm from rolling in. So I'm going to grab the pot just so that you can see what it's like. If you wanted to, you could put a little bit of weight, you know, maybe put your can of beans in there if you need a little bit more um, weight. And then you're going to go down towards the ground and then back up towards you. Down towards the ground and back up. I'm just going to take those out so it doesn't make that noise. And all the way down and all the way up. And so this is a, you know, a common action that we use when we're cooking, doing anything with the hands, but it's something that if we don't strengthen it or we don't mobilize, we don't practice it, we can sometimes lose it, particularly in our non-dominant hand. And that's really what I noticed when I was cooking. So 
what inspired this little practice. Good, three, two, one. And then let's switch over to the other side. I'll just switch it around. I'll do it with the weight this time just so that you can see what it would look like if you were holding something slightly different. Thumb is still going to be facing out this way and you're still thinking of going up and down. So up towards the sky, down towards the floor. Try not to roll the forearm at all and just mobilizing in the wrist. You can also do this with a band if you don't have any household items that are appropriate but you've got a resistance band, you could loop the band underneath your knee and do a similar action. Good, three, and two, and one. Good, and then release that down. And there you have it. Some simple ways that you can mobilize the wrists, strengthen the forearms and the muscles that innovate the fingers and the hands. Hope you enjoy it. Namaste.